good morning, everyone. I hope um, uh, you had a restful evening. Uh, we didn't have any session in the afternoon. That probably gave you more time to rest a bit. Uh, before we uh, start our proceedings, may I call on the religious leaders to give us some um, prayers, please, offer prayers. Imam Jalo, you have the floor. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin. Iyya ka na'abudu wa iyya ka nasta'inu ihdna sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-jina amramta alayhim ghayru al-bahdu wa alayhim wa al-dalin. Allahu allazi jala lakum ulala gararan wa samai binaan wa sawwarakum fa asanu suwarakum. Wa razaq umidaibat zalikum allahu rabbukum fa tabarakallahu rabbil alameen. Huwa al-hayyu la ilaha illa huwa. فأدوه مسلسين الله الدين الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون والسلام على المسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين شكرا لما إمام جالو بشاب you have the floor please thank you chairman Lord God Almighty the God of truth of love of compassion of forgiveness of reconciliation and of judgment. We thank you for your goodness to your children everywhere throughout the whole world. And we thank you for those in this nation, the Gambia. As we seek to bring out the truth, we ask you, Holy Spirit, power will lead us to that path and that there will be justice for all. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Amen. Bishop Rudiko. <laughs> Council, are we ready with uh, today's, um, uh, this morning's witness? If we are, we may proceed. Bring in. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the audience. Uh, we are ready to proceed. Um, Mr. Osha, could you kindly bring in the witness, please? I Pamudu sir. Do swear that. Do swear that. I speak the truth. I speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but. And not even but the truth. So help me. God. So help me Allah. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Sir. Uh, welcome to the TRRC. We have already met, and uh, you know that my name is Esa Maifal. Uh, I'll be leading you uh, to testify uh, before the TRRC on behalf of the commissioners. In a meeting yesterday, you were given certain warnings. Uh, I want to go through that with you again so that it would be clear in the record uh, how you have been dealt with uh, during the investigation process. It's that clear? Yes, sir. And uh, could you draw the microphone closer to you, please, uh, and, uh, and try to speak up so that uh, <coughs> we can all hear uh, okay, what, you, what you're saying? You are aware that you have been adversely mentioned by Mr. Sanasabali, that you participated uh, in torture against him. Uh, you have also 
been implicated in the torture of uh, then RSM Sanyang, now Lieutenant Cornell. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. Can you confirm to the commission that you have been given this information uh, that uh, you have been adversely mentioned? Exactly, sir. What do you mean by that? Could you say again? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Could you confirm also that uh, you have been warned or you have been informed that you have a right not to incriminate yourself? Sir, I was told, sir. Uh, I just want to repeat the reminder to you that even as you testify before the commission, you still have a right not to incriminate yourself. Right. But the commission also has a power to compel you to answer questions. So if we have that tension or that conflict between the right not to incriminate oneself and the commission's power for you to answer a question, any answer you have given at the insistence of the commission uh, would not be used in any subsequent pro criminal proceedings against you. You understand that? Yes, sir. Uh, you gave a statement uh, to the investigators. Can you confirm whether or not that statement was given voluntarily? Yes, sir. It was given voluntarily. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sar. Do you have any questions about the issues we've just covered so far? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, let's start your testimony in earnest. Uh, you did say that your name is Pamo Dusar. Yes, sir. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Kermbuguma village, in the, lo in the lower Nyomi district, not Bank region. Is, is it Mbugumu or Mbuguma? Mbuguma, M-B-U-G-U-M-A. Good. In Lower Nyomi District. Yes, sir. And what's your date of birth? 11 May 1971. Uh, allow for a few seconds okay, between okay. our statements so okay, that uh, there won't be any overlapping speeches. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, tell us about your educational background. I attended Chairman Primary School from 1980 to 1986, then proceeded to Berending Secondary Technical School from 1986 to 1990. What did you do upon completion of secondary school? And I completed in 1990. In 1991, I joined the Gambia National Army on the 5th of August, 1991. And where did you do your training? I did my training at Parapanya Barracks. When did you finish? I finished in 92. And uh, can you tell us a bit about your deployments after, after completion of the training? Yeah, after completing the training, we were moved to various companies. I was personally moved to Alpha Company under the command of uh, Captain Johnson. And thereafter? For how long were you in Alpha Company? Mm. <clears throat> thereafter, uh, thereafter, from 1992 up to 90, early 93, I think, then I was moved to the, attached to the officer's mess in Yundum Barracks, that is anteroom. And for how long did you remain in Yundum Barracks? Yundum Barracks, I was there for a while then. When they have a new recreation hall at Pajara, I was moved there too. But still on the Alpha Company. And what was your job in the anteroom? In the anteroom, there, <coughs> when these officers from lieutenant to majors, when they, uh, when they close work, they normally come there to, I can say, enjoy themselves, buy drinks, sit down, chat. Yeah. So it, it is like, uh, say, a, a restaurant or cafeteria for senior yes, officers? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, on July 22nd, 1994, where were you posted at the time? 
uh, in July 22nd, 1994, I was posted at Mandinaba. Mandinaba. And uh, when did you leave Mandinaba? I was at Mandinaba for almost 10 days. Then they come and pick us there to Fajara Barracks. What were you doing in Mandinaba? We were mounting a checkpoint there. Was it in pursuance or in furtherance of the coup? Yes, sir. So you participated in yes, the sir, coup participated. In, Ju in July, on, on July 22nd, yes, 1990? Okay. Um, where were you in November 11? Uh, November 11, I was at the State Guard. <clears throat> I was at the State Guard. Can you tell us how you came to be moved to the State Guards? Uh, from Mandinaba, we were moved to Fajara Barracks. And from Fajara Barracks, that same month, that was in August, we were moved to Radio Gambia, to Mount Guard there. Then for maybe one week or so, uh, 002 uh, Gibril Say, who was later confirmed to be a lieutenant, arrived with a truck at the Radio Gambia post. Then he warned us that some of us will be going to the State Guard. And that's the time he started calling names. If he calls your name, you take your luggages with your rifle and jump in the vehicle. Then till he finished, we drove to State Guard. Warrant officer class two. Yes, sir. thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for it. So that is how you came to be deployed to the State House? Yes, sir. As a State Guard? Yes, sir. Who was your Im immediate commander? Uh, Lantomba Ntamba was our immediate commander. And uh, who was above Lantomba Ntamba at the time? No, he was the commander there by that time. And uh, you remained at State House until November 11, 1994? Yes, sir. Can you tell us what happened that day? November 11, that very fateful day when these uh, council members left, when they closed and go home. Then after in the evening, or I can say in the night, they came back again. <coughs> which, which council members came back? Council members, that's Sana Sabali, Edward Singhate, Sadibu Hydra, and Yanku Baturi. Did you see them when they arrived? Yeah, I saw them. And tell us what happened after they arrived. Yeah, as far that. as you know. Uh, <clears throat> when they came, Sana said to that man, Edward, let him fall in the man's. So Edward called for a fall in. Everybody, wherever you are, unless those at the very distinct sentry box. But whosoever is not at the sentry box, you have to come and fall in. Okay, then Sana said that we are going for a fight in Yunlum. Anybody who wants to volunteer, you can join us. That's how it goes. And what do you mean by fall in? Fall in, that's to come out. To come out. To converge at a particular, yeah, location, at a particular location. And, yeah. uh, and, be, and uh, be, be present, make yourself present. Yeah. All right. So, and uh, when he called for that fall in, uh, what happened? Yeah. Everybody came and falling, that's the time he said that we are going for a fight at Yundum Barracks. How many soldiers gathered at the point? Actually, there were many anyway. Can you give us an estimate? Estimate? Yeah. It has been a long time, sir. Maybe. I know there were many, but I can't tell how many. Were they up to 100? No, I don't think so. 80? Surely. Maybe 70. I can say maybe. Okay. And the council members, did they come alone? They come with their orders. And uh, when Sana Sabali said that they were going for a fight at Yundum Barracks, and uh, that he was looking for volunteers. What happened? What happened was, 
some volunteer voluntary join, but others they don't join. Were they told what to expect? That's the fight they will expect. Because that was what they were going for. Were they told anything about prisoners? About prisoners? Yes, to take or not to take prisoners. Did they say anything about that? I don't understand you that well. Were they told what to do with people or soldiers they, they capture in their fight? I know at that place, I didn't heard of that. So what did you do after your group was, was asked, when members of your group were asked to volunteer? Me, definitely, I didn't volunteer. Why didn't you? I didn't volunteer because <clears throat> I was not there to fight my own people, relatives. No, I joined the army. <clears throat> to fight for any uh, external forces, but not my own families, family members or comrades. You participated in the coup? Yes, sir. In 1994, yes, in sir. July 22nd? Yeah. There could have been a fight? Yeah, it's possible. You participated regardless? Yes, sir. Why? I participated? Regardless? Yeah. of the fact that there is a possibility that your own brothers would be fighting against you. You know, the July 22nd, I didn't been, I didn't go, I'll be arrested. I didn't been, I didn't go, I'll be arrested. Because some were arrested from their compounds to Yundum and Lok. Uh, but this so one, they said anyone, anybody who want to volunteer, you can come in. What was different between July 22nd and, uh, and November 11, 1994? What was different? There was no much different, but this one, they said anyone who want to volunteer. I didn't mean they didn't say that anyone who want to volunteer, everybody on board, everybody will be on board. Okay, so you decided not to go. Yes, I decided um, not to go. What did you do when the group left? I went to the guard room and we stayed there. Until when? Until the following morning. Did you get the chance to see the group that went, that yeah. volunteered later? Yes, sir. I saw some of them. Can you tell us what happened at State House when they returned? Yeah. <clears throat> I saw them, they were jubilating. They were what? Jubilating. Mm -hmm. They were jubilating, drinking canned drinks. I was standing by the door of the uh, guard room, but I didn't go down. Did you ask your, do, do, do you know what they were jubilating, they what they said, were celebrating? They said that they have succeeded. They have succeeded. In doing what? In counter these people. In November, in November 11 personnel. Did they say what happened to the participants of the November 11 coup? From the state guard, those who participated to go to Yundum? Yes, those, those who returned to state house and were celebrating. Mm. Uh, did they indicate to you, those of you who did not go, did they indicate to you what has happened uh, to those who participated in the November 11 incident? No, sir. Did you hear about any killings? Yes, I heard of killing, but by that time, I never knew who and who were killed. But when they arrived, you knew that they, that group had killed some soldiers? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. How did you feel when you saw your colleagues celebrating the killing of your colleagues? Definitely, sir, I really feel very bad. Because these guys are people whom you know that we know each other. 
So I felt very bad because at that very state, I didn't see anybody from the state house who has even had a single problem or been killed. Because if you had a fighting, it's to, for you to kill me or I kill you, or you wound me. But I've never seen that. So you're suggesting that the casualty mm -hmm. was only from one side? Yeah, that's what I can see, sir. That time, that's what I saw. So as a soldier, does that suggest to you that there was, in fact, perhaps no significant fighting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? That's what I want to say. After November 11, Sanasabali subsequently got arrested. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. Um, before we go into this, perhaps uh, I should just <coughs> remind you of this order warning that we would normally give to uh, witnesses who appear before the commission and uh, are adversely mentioned. Uh, that lying before the commission is a criminal offense. You understand? Yes, sir. So you are expected to speak the truth and the whole truth. Mm -hmm. um, prior to your appearance, formal appearance before the commission, mm -hmm. you indicated that you wanted to apply for amnesty. Um, I had reminded, informed you at the time that there are rules for one to qualify for amnesty. Uh, and principal amongst them is that you have to be truthful in your testimony. Even if the commission were to subsequently recommend amnesty for a person and uh, it later emerges that that person has lied, that recommendation may be withdrawn or amnesty may not be granted. So I give you that warning again so that uh, you would, under, you would uh, pay, bear that in mind as you answer the questions. You understand? Yes, sir. Right. <clears throat> when, after Sanasabali was arrested, could you tell us what happened to you in relation to Sana uh, sometime in 1995? 1995, <clears throat> when Sana Sariu were at uh, mile two, we were taken there by Alaji Martin. Okay. Did Alaji Martin come alone? No, when... he, <clears throat> he didn't come alone. I was at the QRF. What you, by QRF, you mean Quick Reaction Force, quick right? Quick Reaction Force, yeah. Uh, the, and, and where was this QRF located? Just when you enter after the guard room, after the main gate, the guard room is on your right-hand side. Of which premises? At State Guard. At, at State Guard or at State House? At State House, I can say. Okay. So you were at the QRF at State House. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened to that. Uh, I was called by Sergeant Corps. Manlapi, to come and join them for a mission. But he never told me about the mission. All right, and uh, did you agree to go? <laughs> when you are on QRF, you are, have no option. When you are called for a mission by that time, during the transition, you are not there to ask questions or you are not there to say no. Okay. When Manlapi Corps called you, to go on this mission. Was he alone? Yeah, he came and entered the guard room and found me lying down on the bed. The one on top, I was lying down there. He just hit me, man, come. I get down, he said, go and join the vehicle. We are going on an operation, on a mission. Uh, did you find any other people in the vehicle? Any other vehicle in the vehicle? Did you find any other soldiers in the vehicle? Yeah, I find uh, this man, Martin, was sitting in front. Which Martin are you Alaji referring Martin. to? Alaji Martin. What was his rank at the time? Double O two. Uh, warrant of second warrant officer. Warrant, warrant officer, officer two. class two. Class two. Yes. Sir. Uh, yes. And uh, 
who else was in the vehicle? This man was there. Kapul Ndur Omar. Omar Ndur. And how many of you were in the vehicle in total? I think we were about five or six. Yeah, five. You mentioned Sergeant Manlafikor, mm -hmm. Warrant Officer Class 2 Alaja Martin, yourself, Pamodu Sar, Omar Ndur. Mm -hmm. Do you recall who else? Mm. Lamin Senghor. Uh, this Lamin Senghor, uh, do you recall his rank at the time? No, I can't remember. Uh, do you, is he known by any other name? Assassin. Uh, okay. And uh, who else? That's the only one. The other one it was a former Zandarmori officer. We are not used to each other by that time. I so can, so you don't know his name? I cannot recall his name now. Who was the leader of that group? It was Martin, Alaji Martin. And uh, do you recall what time of the day this was? That was in the morning, around 11, 12 to 1, yeah. So tell us what happened after you joined the vehicle? Yeah. When we joined the vehicle, when the vehicle started, uh, Omar Nur was the driver. We went out of the state house, then to the arch, and proceeded. But with all, I never knew where we were going. Until we reached at the gates of, at the sides of mile two, I see him going left. Then we enter mile two. The mile two officers opened the gate, then we entered. What did you, what did the group have in their possession as they were going into mile two? In their possession, everybody was having his rifle with plastic bag. Yeah, Martin was having plastic bag with him. Did you see them with any other tools? That very day, I didn't see any tool. Did you see anybody with a hammer? No, sir. No, sir. Did you see anybody with an electric box. Electric? I don't know about an electric box. A box that emits electricity when you when you wind the handle. No, I never see that in my life even. Okay. And uh, and what happened when you arrived at mile two? Yeah. They opened the prison officers, the prison guards opened the doors, we enter. They close and open another door. That's a security wing, they said. We entered two. They close. And they go to, to where Sana Sabale is. <coughs> Court tell me, told me to stand at the door, the last door. How did they manage to get all those doors opened? The prison officers are having their, their keys. Yes, what I'm trying to drive at is mm -hmm. Martin, you, the leader of your group, mm -hmm. was a soldier or is still a soldier. Yes, sir. The prison is managed by prison officers. Mm -hmm. How did Martin get the prison officers to open all those doors for him to have access to Sana? <laughs> so those guys were powerful by that time. They were very much powerful. The prison officers will not, even, even their commissioners, if Martin told him do this, he had to do it. Martin, Almamo Mane, Musa Jamme, and even Manlapi. They were very near to the chairman. Are you suggesting that the prison officers would open the doors just out of fear for these people? Yeah, of course. You have to. You have to open the door. Because if not, the consequences will be severe for him. Did they, did they do anything to suggest that they were reluctant to open the doors? To re be reluctant to open the door? Yes. <clears throat> no, sir. They don't show any form of reluctance. 
they just comply. They just comply. Yeah, they just comply. I don't know whether that was the first time or I don't know. But for me, that was my first time to go there. But he just went, called the prison officer. I want to go to security wing. The prison officer lead us with the keys. And he opened the enter. What happened when you entered? When we entered, Malapi told me to be on guard at the door, last door. So I was standing there. It's just a corridor. You go by the corridor. We left or uh, right. That's where I saw them bringing Sana out from. Who brought him out? It's Malapi himself with the prison officer. The prison officer opened and uh, go inside and remove him. And Sana, was he free at the time or was he restrained? Free by how? His hands. Yeah. Did they put <clears throat> anything on his hands? Yeah, him, his hands were cuffed. Did you repeat that? His hands were cuffed behind. So he were, the handcuffs were placed uh, on his hands yeah. uh, at the back? Yes, sir. Behind back. him? Yeah, behind him. And then what happened? And then they, they brought him. They told him to sit down on the floor. Yeah, he sat that down with pity order. Could, could, you, could you say that? With what? PT order. What is PT order? Yes. Camouflage uniform and the army shirt. T-shirt. That's PT order. Not in full gears anyway. And then? And he, they told him to sit down. And he do so. He seated on the floor. And that's this time they started putting this uh, plastic bag on his head. Who was doing that? Uh, Manlafi was, uh, was doing that after Amandur, vice versa. Then after, for some seconds, they will remove it. Martin will ask, Sana, you are trying to overthrow the chairman. Which Sana will say negative. Never. But that's what they never want to hear. Especially Martin. Uh, will, uh, could kindly speak up. He will instruct them to do it again. Who would, ins who would give the instructions? Martin himself. Uh, and to who would he be instructing? You know, at times it will be uh, this man. Come on, Lord, at times it will be... M it's only one man who can hold this plastic and put it in somebody's head. Let's take it step by step. Mm -hmm. Who would be giving the instructions? Martin. Alaji Martin. And who would he be instructing? For a time, he will, be, he will instruct uh, Malapikor. At times, he will instruct Amandur or Senghor himself. To do what? To put the nylon bag in his head. To put it over his head? Over his head, yeah. Sorry. And uh, what, what was the purpose? For him to confess. But what effect? would the nylon bag have if once placed over his head? It's very painful, sir. If the nylon bag spend some minutes there, the, the individual will collapse. He will be painted. Would collapse as a result of what? As of the hotness inside. Would, would that be suffocation? Yes, sir. And uh, how would you describe what word would you use to describe this kind of a session? That's, anyway, that is torturing. So you're saying, therefore, that Sana was being tortured? Mm -hmm. Could you answer yes or no? Yes, sir, he was tortured. And what was the purpose of torturing him? The purpose was for him to say that he was trying to overthrow the chairman then. What answers was he giving as the torture was ongoing? Anytime they remove the plastic bag and ask him, he will say, never. I was not trying to overthrow anybody. I was not trying to overthrow the chairman. Was that answer satisfactory to the interrogators? Maybe that one, <coughs> they were not satisfied with that. 
But Senator will never say that, yes, I was trying to overthrow. Senator never agreed to say, yes, I was trying to overthrow him. Apart from putting the plastic bag over his head, uh, trying to suffocate him, was anything else done to him? Yeah. When one is doing that, others will be mounting, slapping. What do you mean by mounting? Mounting with their boots. You mean kicking? Kicking, kicking yeah. Kicking. And kicking and what? Uh, slapping. Who would be doing that? Anybody, everybody. You mentioned the number of people who were there. Yeah. Okay, let's... Even Martin will beat. Okay, so we yeah. start yeah. one by one. When let's see. <coughs> Martin will beat. When uh, it is uh, this man's turn, man will to put the nylon bag over his head, his head, then that other man will participate, Omar Amandur and Senghor too. Did you beat Sana Sabali? No, I didn't touch Sana. But you stood guard? Yeah, I stood by the door. Guarding the place, providing protection? Yes, sir. Do you consider yourself as a participant in this torture? Yes, sir. But not physically. But you participated nonetheless? Yes, sir. How, how about the former gendarmerie officer? Did he also participate? Yes, sir. So all of them participated in the beating and suffocation of Sana Sabali. Mm -hmm. And you saying who supervised this activity? Alaji Martin. Okay. What do you say to the suggestion that Alaji Martin never touched Sana Sabali? He never touched Sana Sabali. Yes. What do you say to that? True or false? Anyway, it can be true because he used to sit down, light his cigarette, smoking, giving orders, and asking questions. You just said that all of them participated in the kicking and the slapping. Mm -hmm. And you started giving us a list, mm -hmm. starting with Martin. I'll ask you again. Mm -hmm. Did Martin beat Sana Sabali? I saw him sitting anyway. I saw him sitting. But he, is, he was the one giving orders. What orders was he giving? For them to put this nylon bag over his head. How about the kicking and the beating? The kicking and the beating was the junior officers, Amandur, or Manlafi and Zemor, and the other Zandarmori officer, whom I cannot remember his name. Did Martin give orders to kick and beat? Yes, sir. He gave orders. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. So you are saying, therefore, that Alaji Martin ordered the plastic bag to be put over the head of Sana Sabali. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He, he also ordered that Sana Sabali be kicked and, and hit. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. Was there at any point in time that Alaji Martin ordered the men not to beat Sana Sabali? No, I cannot remember that. I cannot remember giving that order. What do you say to the suggestion that Sana Sabali was never tortured in the presence of Alaji Martin? That is not true, sir. As what I can remember is a long time, it's 24 years, but still now I can remember that. I can remember that Sana was tortured, I was standing. So when Martin said that Sana was never tortured in front of him, I cannot believe that. No, well, I didn't say that Martin ah, said. Okay, okay. I just asked, what do you say to the suggestion mm -hmm. that's, that Sabali was never tortured in the presence of Alaji Martin? Would you say that is true or would you say that is a lie? That is not true. Uh, how did Sana react to what was happening to him? React by... How did he respond to what was happening to him? Did he cry? Was he shouting? What happened to him? Yeah, he does shout, sir. He does shout. 
he do shout definitely. Why was he shouting? Because it was painful for the plastic bag to be put in your head. It's very painful, I know. For how long did this activity happen? How long did it take place? For uh, the nylon bag to be put in his head? Or the, no, the entire his... session with Sana Sabali? Uh, the entire session can last maybe for 30 minutes or so, or less than that. And he was released or the session continued? No, he used to be taken inside, then they bring others. <coughs> Who was the person brought in next? The person? Brought in next? That's uh, Sadibu, Lieutenant Sadibu Haidara, or Captain. And what happened to him? Uh, the same thing was done to him. He was beaten, put the nylon bag in his head to suffocate him or to make him to paint. And he will be asked these questions. Okay, who would be asking the questions? It's only Alaji Martin. And, and did anybody give orders as to for the beating and the kicking? It's only Martin who gave out orders because he was the most senior. So, in essence, you're saying that this entire association of both Sana Sabali and Sadibu Haidara was conducted by who? By Alaji Martin. What do you say to the suggestion that Alaji Martin had nothing to do with the torture of Sadibu Haidara? For him personally. What do you say to the suggestion mm -hmm. that Alaji Martin has nothing to do with the torture of Sadibu Haidara? So that when I say no to that, because that was the very day we were all there, and the, these guys were tortured. By who? By the entourage, the <coughs> team. That's uh, Raj Martin, Simon Lapikor, Omar Nur, Semar, and me, plus one random officer. What do you say to the suggestion? That uh, Senghor, Lamin mm. Senghor, mm. a.k.a. Assassin, mm. has never touched Sana Sabali. He has never touched Saadi Haidara. What do you say to that? I say no to that. Is it true or is it false? No, it's false. What if I tell you that it's Lamin Senghor who said that? He said he never touched those people. You can say that, but me, what I can tell you that I, what and what I saw that he did it. Is he lying? He is lying. He is lying. Sadi Haidara, for how long was he tortured? It was the same time, around the same time, maybe 30 minutes or so. Then he will be taken back. Then others will be brought in. A little back to Sana Sabali. Did he suffer any injuries? That time, maybe he can suffer injuries, or maybe he can suffer injuries. But you know, if the camouflage, when you put on this camouflage uniform, when you suffer injuries, people will not detect very fast. How about his face? His face, that day I didn't see any injuries. Did you see any other injuries on him on any other day? No, that was the only day I went there. So on this particular day, you did not see any injuries on his face? No, since that particular day, I never go to this. No, no the question is, on that particular day, you did not see any injuries on Sana Sabali? Because definitely I was far from him. I was at the gate, and he was here. Maybe, I, that's what I said, maybe he can sustain injuries, which I will not see. How about Sadi Haidara? Did you see any injuries on him? Same thing, because I was at the same place. So now let's move on. Uh, was anybody else tortured on that day? Yes, sir. Who was that person? That was Warrant Officer Class 2, Sanyang Baukar. Can you tell us what happened with him? Yeah. The third guy, when, the <coughs> when they brought him, it was Otu Sanyang. To my surprise, I never knew that he was here. He was there, sorry. Who brought him? 
Uh, I think it's Lur. Kopul Lur. If I recall my mind, Kopul Lur went and bring him. I was at the gate, I saw him until I was scared. Because I never think of him being there actually, and I never knew that he was there. And that's the time Malakor called upon me for me to come and join. So I came. He gave me a plastic bag and told me, did you see how we were doing it? I said, yes. I never want to do it, but I have no option. I have to do it. I put it in Babukar's this thing, head, for seconds, and the Martin said that, let me remove. I remove it here. still asks the same question which he asked for that man from Sana. And asked him, you are <coughs> trying to overthrow you and Sana and Sadibu and the men, the chairman. Sadibu, eh, this man. Sanyang said negative, never. I have never wanted to. For some seconds, you will say that do the same again. And I've then, and when he, who would say that? Martin. And what would you do in response? I have to put the nylon bag. Uh, we 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 want to understand mm -hmm. what this what this actually entails. When you put the nylon bag over his head, mm -hmm. what would you do? Maybe when you do it to some people, once, twice. Uh, no, listen to the question. Mm. We want to understand how that whole operation works. Mm. What, when you put the nylon bag over the head, what would you do to the nylon bag or to the person? You'll get hold of the nylon bag, the two sides. This one here, this one here, you hold it, clip it. So, and you hold it how? You just clip it like this. What I want to drive at is mm -hmm. how do you do it and why do it that way? Me, that was my first time to see such things and I was told to do the same as they were doing. And in, uh, what exactly was it? Why do you have to hold it like this? Yeah, you know when you put it inside his head, you don't hold it, it will go out. When you turn, turn, it will go out. What was the purpose of holding it like this? Yes, yeah. for him to feel the hotness. To feel the hotness, because there will be no more ventilation to go in. And, and by tightening, mm -hmm. tightening, tightening the grip, mm -hmm. there would be less air going in. Yeah, less ventilation going in. And therefore, the person would be suffocated. Yeah, when you do it for more than some seconds, it will be suffocated. The person may suffocate. And this is what you are being directed to do? Yes, sir. By who? By Alaji, Martin. And did you comply? I have to comply. But you knew that what you were doing was causing something to the victim, right? Definitely. And what was it it was causing to the victim? Pain. Very big pain. Suffering? Suffering, yeah. So that the person would break down and do what? And I said that, yes, it's true. So you, the objective was to break the person down yeah. by use of pain mm -hmm. such that the person would confess. Yes, sir. And that is what was your purpose. That was our purpose, that's this. And you participated in yes, that? Yes, I participated. But you knew, didn't you? I knew. That the order you were given was illegal. Yes, sir, I know. Yet you complied with the order. I have no option, sir. I have no option there. When I don't do what is said to me, I have to face the consequences. Maybe taken to mile two, because by the time that it was transition, it was dangerous. I might be taken to mile two again. You assumed mm. that by disobeying that unlawful order, mm. you would be taken to mile two. Or did you in fact know that by disobeying that unlawful order, you would end up in mile two? Which is which? Was then it I, an assumption or is something you knew for a fact? Yeah, I knew that. 
And every soldier knew that when you are, by that time when you are given an order, no, there was no actual law. You see, double O2s can take somebody, or captains can take somebody. No? When I say that, no, I will not do it. These people are very near to the chairman by then. They will go and tell him something. They say that uh, Sar did not <coughs> want to do anything. He will just order them to take me to mile two. What can I do? Nothing. Has that happened before? No, I don't. I, maybe it can happen, I don't know. Then what was your basis for believing it? I was definitely peer. I was working with peerless uh, every day, every time. Yeah, every day I go, I know I can be, you know, it can cause problems for me any time I will be taken to Malta. That was why I don't talk too much. I don't go to gatherings. I just take my time. But as a soldier, mm -hmm. did you understand that it was unlawful for you to follow an unlawful order? Yeah, I know. I know. What you are you aware that if you follow an illegal order, you would be legally responsible? Yes, sir. But sir, by that time, <laughs> I was not even crazy enough. They tell me to do this. I say no. It's not legal. No, no soldier will do that. Why? No. Yeah, sir. By that time, if you do that, they will say that you are trying to do something. No soldier will do that by that time, during the transition. No. I was the youngest, though. I was the youngest at the State Guard. But I know, even the big soldiers with ranks, they will not be ordered to do something they said. No. But the problem you have mm. is that you have not given us an example mm. of an instance where somebody refused an unlawful order and something happens to him. Anyway, that one I cannot tell. But so uh, what, what, I know. what I want to know mm. is whether your fear mm. was born out of a mere assumption or was it born out of a real and credible threat that if you did not comply with the order, something terrible would happen to you? Yeah. That's, it. That's your second thing. But at that point in time, what was the fear that you had uh, derived from? Did anybody tell you anything apart from do it? I don't understand that. Did they tell you? Okay. Can you describe the circumstances in which you were ordered to place the, uh, the nylon, the plastic bag, over the head of Sanyan? Yeah, I was ordered to do that, to just put it in his head and hold it. Can you tell us how the order was made? Yeah, Malafi told me that. You see how we were doing it? I said yes. He just said that, take this plastic bag and put it in this man's head, uh, double O2 Sanya. Did he point a gun at you? He pointed? Did he point a gun at you? No. Everybody was with his gun. He never Did he threaten to beat you if you didn't do it? No, he don't. Did he tell you what would happen to you if you didn't do it? No, he never told me, but me, I know what will happen to me. That's why. So it was just born out of a belief that you yeah. had yeah. that if you didn't do it, mm -hmm. something would happen to you. Mm -hmm. That's the belief and that I... belief was not based on an example of something that happened to people like you, which yeah. you know about. It was not born <coughs> out of that. Yeah, maybe, maybe there must be an example, even, but it has been a while, I can't remember. But <coughs> even the old soldiers, when you ask them by that time, <laughs> nobody will be crazy enough to be given an order, whether wrong or right, and you don't fulfill it. Tell us your opinion. At the time in the army, mm. was the law respected or was it not respected? Actually not. It was not, definitely. 
told the soldiers we were doing whatever they wanted. Definitely, it was not, the law was not respected. Anybody will do anything, you cannot do nothing. You see somebody will be gripped, taken two miles to you, you cannot do nothing. So that was what I was avoiding. When I say that I will not do anything, they will go and report me. I have to be taken to mile two. So, so with regards to Sanyang, mm. who else but was he in fact beaten and kicked like the others? Yes, sir. Did you participate in the kicking and the beating? Yes, sir. Alaji Martin, did Al he participate? No, in Alaji the... was sitting down. And what was he doing while he was sitting down? He just let his cigarette smoking, asking when you leave him, when we remove the plastic bag, he will ask him. And Continuous. who was supervising that torture? It was Manlapi. Listen to the question. Hmm. Who was supervising the torture of Sanyang? Yeah, it was all supervised by Alaji Martin. What if I tell you that uh, Alaji Martin never presided over the torture of Sanya? Sir, so I swear by the Quran. I'm, I'm a Muslim. I will not lie against somebody, especially my boss. I didn't mean that he didn't do it. I will not because it's. I, for me, it's Martin who take me to the mile too. I never know where this security wing is. I never went there. It was because of Martin I read there. He led us. So if he said that he never supervised it, with due respect, that is not true. That is not true. He led us. And uh, for how long uh, was RSM Sanyang tortured? Maybe around 25, 30 minutes. Did any one of those victims confess to the allegations made against them? Never, sir. Never. And uh, what happened afterwards? Afterwards? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sanyang was taken to his cells. Then we left and the prison officer came and closed the door and we left. Who decided uh, that... Uh, you would end the torture session? It's the boss. It was the boss, uh, Alaji Martin. Okay. So, so when you finished mm. and left, did Alaji Martin say anything to you guys? The time we were going, you just say, congratulations, keep it up. That's what he said to us. You're what, well, well done. What was he congratulating you for? How uh, these people were maltreated. You mean how they were tortured? Yes. Did uh, he look happy? Uh, of course, of course. He, he looked happy because he was the boss who is supposed to report. Report to who? To the then chairman. What was his name? Yeah, Jame. How do you know that he was going to report to Yaya Jame? No, I know it was an order given to him. Martin will not just sit and say that let us go and do this and do this without the notice of the chairman. So your suggestion is that Yaya Jami must have ordered Martin to go and carry out this torture? Yeah. If not, if not Yaya Jami, it will be among the council members. But, but your, your position, your belief is that belief, it was Yaya Jami? Yeah, my belief was it was Yaya Jami because... Was there a direct relationship between Martin and Yaya Jame? Yeah, that's what I first named to you. I named them to you. I said that <coughs> Musa Jame, he was a double O2, Alma Momane, staff sergeant, uh, Alaj Martin, and Manuel Picor. They were strong guys of this man, the chairman then. They were very near to him. And they would have direct access to Yeah, him. direct access. For Almamo, he was more than a boss. He was just a staff sergeant, but he was very powerful than even a lieutenant. How about Martin? Yeah, Martin too was powerful because he knows the guy since uh, Pajara Barracks. We received evidence mm. that in one of these torture sessions, mm. 
man la fi kor o alaji martin will that carry the hammer the hammer yes into the torture room and that was used to torture sana sabale i cannot <clears throat> in that one i cannot say no it's not true because i was not there i actually was not there that was the first time i went to uh, this prison uh, security wing and that was the last time i went there because from there i was taken to the plain cloth so i never go back to that place mile too so you never saw a hammer being used the first time i went i never saw a hammer neither an electrical this thing i don't know how it's there you never saw any of those two no in my life uh, what do you say to the suggestion that sana sabali was tortured on several other occasions mm. by this same group of torturers including yourself yes sir sana i had him saying that myself i had him saying almost 20 times which i categorically deny i will not lie if i lie here here after i will say the same <clears throat> i will not lie this that was my only time i went to mile 2 you understand sana said that maybe 20 times but billahi wallahi to lie with this quran i never went there 20 times i went there only once yeah then after i moved i was moved to the plain cloth but sana remembers you very clearly yeah sana remembers me but he can make mistake too he will think that whenever he see martin he will think that i will be there but honest to muhammad i living <coughs> by <coughs> allah i went there only once uh, sana clearly stated that in all those sessions in which you were involved mm -hmm. you are mainly standing by the door mm -hmm. you did not participate mm -hmm. in physically torturing him mm -hmm. that's what he said yeah that was what he said are you suggesting that i am suggesting that i went there once i was standing by the door when they brought sana i was standing by the door he might take it that every time they went there i will be there standing by the door Maybe that is why he meant to do mention my name. It was Sana brought me up. He knows me. <coughs> and you know what after. Do you have a reason to think that Sana would want to lie against you? Anyway, that one can. I've never touched him but for 20 times or more. No, I say no to that. Only once I went to mile two. Only once. I never go there twice three no that's why this hammer or this electrical thing you saying it was a story to me he said story to me that's why he think that every time the group is going I'll be going no the group can be going they choose other people I will not be there for how much longer did you remain in state guards after this after this particular assignment i was there 96 97 august i left so you mean to tell us mm -hmm. that between 95 and 1997 mm -hmm. you were never again selected for a torture session since i left there at that time i was never selected because i was moving to this uh, to the plain cloth i have never they have never came up to call, collect me so you were selected for torture only once only once i was on qr i was on qr how do you feel about what you have done how do i feel about what you have done regrettable very well regrettable every time i think of it i do regret it moreover why do you regret it yeah because I know it was that that was why even I even felt that until I left the army I shouldn't I was very young I was a line couple but if I feel this thing is not right I say before myself I will do, <laughs> the same thing will be done to me it's better for me to quit and leave the army that's why I don't I all I don't run away I wait until my service ends I never go for leave and retire I work the whole seven, 6 years then I <coughs> brought their baggages and told them that I'm leaving. They were even thinking that I'm joking. 
Because if I went on leave and retire, they will motivate me to continue. But because what I was saying, no, I don't like it. Why didn't you like it? No. We are all the same. Why should we be torturing somebody? Killing somebody? No. That does not mean we to come to the army to be torturing somebody. No. Definitely. Definitely. Have you ever apologized to the, the, your victims? My victim? No, definitely no. I never have their contact to call them or meet them. That's never. Why? I was definitely, for Sana, Sana was not here. Sana was not here. But for Babukar, I cannot just go there like that and apologize. Maybe there will be consequences. Like what? Maybe he'll feel angry again. And I was not doing this on my own. He might feel angry. Something bad can happen. You understand? This was the very good time. I have to apologize. If Babukar were standing here, what would you say to him? Yeah, I have to kneel before him and apologize. Because and a human being, I have never treated a human being. Even no, even I don't know you. Even I don't know you. I will not treat you on my own. No, never. Babukar may be watching. Yeah, he may maybe. be listening. Yeah, maybe. What would you say to him? Yeah, to be apologizing to him. For him to forgive me and the whole country. It was just not my intention to do that. Definitely, it was not intention of him. I'll be apologizing to Babukar for the pain <coughs> they made me to do to him. Definitely, I'm regretting it for him to apologize me, to forgive me, sorry. Who do you think, hmm. which superior do you think is responsible also for your action? Me? Who among your superiors, mm. your seniors, mm -hmm. would you believe is responsible for your actions? Me, it, it, I can only say it's Martin. Because of Martin, I went there. I can only blame him. Could you say that again? I say I can only blame him because he took me there. And this was not a team at the State House. Maybe anybody at the QRF, they will pick you and you went with them. Yeah. Are you willing mm -hmm. to participate in reconciliation meetings with your victims? Yes, sir. If I have it, I will. If I have it, I will. Yeah. No, because the, the is, it's not if you have to. Mm -hmm. The issue is, are you willing to? To meet my... To participate in a reconciliation meeting with your victims? Yes, sir. If I have it, I will. Yes, sir. Are you proud of what you have done? No, never. What should, should I be proud? I should I be proud. I should not be proud. And I will not, I'm not proud. I told you that's why I discouraged and left the army at a very young stage with a rank. Mm -hmm. No further questions, Mr. Chairman? Thank you very much, Mr. Council, and thank you, Mr. Sar, yes, sir. Uh, for your testimony and agreeing to come to the uh, commission to testify. Commissioners, if you have any questions, we would uh, please proceed. Yes, sir. Mr. Sar, I have yes, a sir. question for you. Mm. You said in the 1994 coup d'etat, mm. you voluntarily went out. Mm -hmm. to destroy the constitution of this country and topple a legal government mm -hmm. duly elected. Mm -hmm. But when you were asked to go to Yundum mm -hmm. to fight a few soldiers mm -hmm. who were rebellious, you said, no, you will not go. Can you justify this action? Yes, sir. Uh, July 22nd, it was that of the army. If I don't go, they will search for me and arrest me and lock me up. That's everybody have to report to Yundum Barracks. I don't mean the Zandarmori then, but the soldiers. If you are caught, you'll be detained. So you have to, either what, you have to report to Yundum Barracks. So I see to it that I was a, sol <coughs> I was a soldier, 
I have to go and know, go to this uh, camp, even if I am to be killed, I have to go and know what is happening. That's what took me there. So eventually when I reach, they deploy me to Mandinaba, which I cannot say no. I went there for one week, for 10 days, it was more than one week, during the rainy season. Yeah. For that of uh, November 11, we were asked by Sana, anybody who want to volunteer, we are going for a fight. Yeah. And uh, after I use my six and say for a fight to go and kill your own comrades or mentors, no, because I know you know, I was, <coughs> since I passed out, I was at Yundum. I, maybe that time we know each other, you know, everybody there. So why should I be going there to kill my own comrades? That's why I found back and go to the garden. I never participated. And moreover, killing is not my line. Because I know fighting is killing or wounding. I might be killed, I might kill, I might be wounded, I might wound somebody. And I know how killing is because definitely I have tested it, sir. I have tested it. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Sar. During your uh, following your induction into the Gambia uh, National Army uh, and uh, the training that you said you had in Farafinia, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, during that period of um, training, what uh, procedures, what rules, uh, perhaps contained in rule books? standard operating procedures or whatever manuals you were given uh, during the training. I'm driving, I'm, I'm going to the point of, uh, um, of uh, obeying or not obeying um, illegal orders. Were there any rules that um, you were made aware of um, uh, that if illegal orders are given to you, it's your responsibility not to carry out those things. Were you trained um, on these points at all during your uh, induction, I mean, during your training period um, uh, in Farafenye? Yes, uh, <coughs> legal and not legal. By that time, there was no legal thing. There was no legal legality. Anything you are told of during the transition, you have to do it. Either you like it or you don't like it. You have to do it. If not, the consequences will come ahead. So if I said no, <laughs> may I join their by force? Who will say, why should you take this man? Who will ask that question? And if you have a complaint, where to lodge it? You don't have anywhere to lodge your complaint. Because if you say that you are going to lodge a complaint, you will be termed as an enemy. So you are afraid of doing that. So any either wrong or right, you have to do it. Well, my point actually was not on uh, ignoring uh, rules. I just want to ascertain the existence of those rules. You, um, uh, can you tell us if there were any rules that you were, rule book in particular, as I said, uh, whether or not um, there were any standard operating procedures uh, booklet that you were given that contained uh, these things. Ignoring those rules, that's something else. But were you given anything else? Were you trained on uh, obeying, I mean, following rules? Mm -hmm. No, sir, at that time, <coughs> to obey them or disobey them, no. Because when you see a, a, a lieutenant giving orders to a major, definitely you are a dumper, you are rankless. When a couple or a sergeant give you orders, what can you do? A captain or a lieutenant giving order to a lieutenant, a colonel. So what am I here there to say no as a most junior, junior, junior officer? Because our intake was the last before the July 22nd. And by that time, I was only 24 years old. So I'm afraid to say no on anything. Well, you are required to obey rules even in primary four. Hmm? So you can, 24 years old, that wouldn't um, uh, give you any excuse not to obey rules. No, no sir, I saw my seniors 
they will not disobey. So I'm not there to disobey too. I will not be, definitely, to say no. I'll be afraid of that. I'll be taken to mile too, because of what? Disobeying. So definitely by that time, everybody was, every soldier, I can tell you, mile two was his problem, because soldiers were plenty there. Any small thing, you'll, they will say that you'll be taken very, if you don't be careful, you'll be taken to mile two. So you have to be very careful. You are not there to disobey orders, You're either wrong or right. And you have nowhere to complain. The only way I do it is when my service finished in 97, I quit. I go home. I have my peace of mind. Thank you. Deputy Chair, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Saab. My yes. question is, you, in responding to Commissioner Jalo, you said you have tested killing. Yeah. Can you explain the circumstances under which you tested killing? Thanks. Thank you very much. You know, when I said that I tested death, it was a long time during my childhood days. You know, so my, my, my father was killed. I was standing and he was killed. I was going to help him, and I was hit with a stick on my neck. I fell down. Maybe hours, I was at the hospital. Even my father's burial, I was not aware. That's why I said that I have tested that. Because I was definitely, I cannot know where I was for hours, maybe 10 hours or more. That's why I said I know how pain is. Because my father was killed right in front of me. I was standing. I was very young, 10, 11, 12. So that's why I said that I tested that. I don't want to involve in such types of things. So. Thank you, Mr. Saab. Sorry about that ordeal. Yeah. Sorry. We pray for your father's soul. May Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, oh, sorry. Imam C, you yeah. have the floor, please. Jere Jaw Sar, Manglai Dharam Chi, Richie Rebinga Richie, Ak Jagulu Bunga Bunga Jagulu. Thank you for the regret that you have expressed and the. Manglai Chi Gerem, Manglai Chi Santu. Thank you on that. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Commissioner Akkad, did you ask for the floor? Oh, sorry. I thought, uh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't have any questions, you don't have to ask at all. I thought you, when I saw so you take your thing off, I thought maybe you want. Um, uh, Mr. Sar, do you have any concluding remarks to make? If you do, please proceed. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon, the commissioners and the legal councils and everybody present here. What I did is very wrong. I knew very well about it. I'm apologizing to uh, uh, Colonel Baukar Sanyan to forgive me in the name of Allah. It was done unwillingly. And I'm appealing to the whole Gambian community and even non-Gambians whom I have ever offended <clears throat> saying that we are all one, Gambia is too small. When you hit somebody here, maybe you hit a friend in Basse, 
you are all the same. So let's forgive each other. It will be difficult to forget, but we can forgive each other. As I have offended, Babukar can forgive me. Maybe somebody will offend me, he, I can forgive him. You are interrelated. So I'm asking for forgiveness from everybody. So let's work to develop our country. To develop our country, especially the service. When the service have some fractions, definitely to work there, it will be very difficult, very, very difficult, because there will be no cooperation anywhere, especially the army. Because I knew the, I knew the army. I started in the army. So cooperation is very important. Let people cooperate and respect the security forces. And respect the security forces. The securities are not your enemy. Are not the enemies of civilians. No, we are working for you. Security are working for the civilian. If you see you can sleep, it's because of the security. So let's give respect to the security. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm asking for forgiveness from Colonel Babu Karsanya and uh, every Gambian. Either I knew it or I don't know it, I have offended you. I'm asking for forgiveness. Because hereafter, day of judgment, I have to. So I'm asking for forgiveness from anybody I have offended. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Sir, um, uh, for, the, for your testimony Thank and you, uh, for the expression of remorse that you have just um, uh, made. Council, um, we will break um, for 30 minutes. We would uh, next witness be ready for 12 noon. Uh, yes, indeed, Mr. Chairman. The witness would be ready. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned. We come back at 12 noon.